By now, you've probably heard my magic wand story. It's a brand that's been part of my personal journey for more than 20 years. But no matter how many times I sing magic wands praises, I'll never be able to fully capture the story of this incredible brand. Well, now journalist and author Kate Sloan just completed a limited audio series documenting the history and impact that Magic Wand has created over the last 56 years. It's called Making Magic. And the series chronicles Magic Wand's incredible brand story through interviews with nearly 40 experts, performers, business owners, educators, and fans. So I got a sneak preview of the series. And what I loved is that Kate weaves together snippets from all their interviews into this amazing story arc. She covers Magic Wand's journey from a appliance store massager to its legendary influence on culture and sexual independence. And it's all just fascinating. The first episodes of Making Magic are available now at makingmagicseries.com or on all popular podcast platforms. Just search for Making Magic or visit makingmagicseries.com today. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. On today's show, I'm talking about the things you might want to avoid saying in your relationship. And I'm taking your calls. Topics include the seemingly small phrases that you shouldn't say to your partner and what you should say instead. And I promise you, you say some of these because I did too. Your partner wants to swing, but you're not really into it. Like, at all. What do you do about that? Okay, so you like trans men, but aren't so experienced on giving oral pleasure. And your partner likes your size, but you'd like them to experience something a little bit fuller. All this and more. Thanks for listening. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything, everything in between. For more information, check out sexwithemily.com. We have some killer blogs going up for your reading pleasure and your sexual pleasure. And you can also find me, so exciting, Sirius XM Radio, five days a week on Stars Channel 109, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 Pacific. It's amazing. Get a free three-month trial, sexwithemily.com slash SXM, or just call us. 888 Find us on all social media. It's at Sex with Emily across the board. It's a good time. You'll be learning. You'll be loving. You'll be getting some toys. And I love hearing from all of you there. Okay, guys, enjoy the show. There are some common phrases that you are probably saying that could be damaging your relationship. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, and and I've been guilty. I've said these. I've said these probably to friends. I've said these to people. But they're but they don't work, you guys. Words can kill when they come to relationships. Little tiny small words, phrases. You know, a lot of you call in and you're like, oh, we keep having the same fights, or I swear I talked to her about it. I told her or I told him what I needed, but it's not happening. It's not happening. So I think it would be really great for us to go through these because just because you said you wanted more sex, if you were saying, for example, Let's see, which one would be good? You never initiate sex. If you said you never initiate sex, number one, that makes me want to never initiate it. Because I feel blamed. Now I never will. will. (laughs) And also when you say something like, you never, or you you always, first of all, it's not true. Like I'm sure your partner maybe has once initiated, but besides that, it just, it triggers us because we feel criticized. We feel, you know, unappreciated and it, it just elevates it. Like whenever someone says like, you know, you never make time for me or you always put yourself first. You never compliment me. That's not an incentive for people to actually do it. And that also can like, you know, gets people on the defensive right away. Language like that. Yeah, what are some things that people have said to you that just make you, that oh. drive you crazy? Okay, so here we can go through some more of these. Uh, you never is one of them. Let me see what else. Oh, okay. <sighs> Hold on, I wrote some of these. Oh, whatever. Oh, God. <laughs> That's not even a thing. If someone goes, whatever, whatever. That is super triggering. It comes across as you don't care and you're not engaging in the conversation. What you could say is like, I need some time to think. Let me think about this. If you feel that coming on, but whatever is automatically kind of douchey. The other thing, and just kind of rude. 
Yeah. And I always try not to say it because when I do say it, that's I'm like, I am done. That's what it means. It means right. I'm done with this conversation. Right. But and you that's kinda... when you got to deescalate and just say, I can't talk about this anymore. The yeah. other thing is here is, okay, so why? Okay, you you should. The should one is really tricky because it means like, oh, you should go to the, you should go to the gym. You know, you should you should pick up your socks. You should come home earlier. Like, first of all, if they're not asking for advice and you're giving them advice, that is going to make them feel like you're not appreciating them, that you're criticizing them right away. Just think about how strong that is. You should. You should. You should go to the gym. You should. <sighs> That's like the quote unquote nagging. Kind it's kind of. of is a nagging thing. So instead you can be like, I, what would be a good thing here? So. Instead of saying, I think it would be fun if we started you know, do being more active together. Let's be more active together. Right. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm worried. I think we should take a class together together. We should take a class at the gym together. We should, we should. Instead of make putting it upon your partner. Like people say to me, all the things they say. Oh, God. <laughs> people say, okay, call us with any of your things that you shouldn't say anymore. Or we'll tell you what, how not to say it. Triple eight. Nine four seven eight two seven seven. This is just impersonalized. You should really be doing video, Emily. I know we're doing video. That's not even in a relationship, but in life. Or you should. Oh, here's the thing, because I'm sometimes not organized. <laughs> you know what you should do, Emily? You should make a list. Why don't you make a list and write everything down, and then we can talk. And I'm like, you think I have never? My lists have lists. That doesn't work for me. A lot of the times when people say you should, it's usually things that I'm. Most of us know already. I know I should do this. However, I'm not doing it. Leave me alone. I didn't ask you. (laughs) You're so right. That the should, whatever is following you should is something that we already know. I'm sure we've heard it a thousand times. And we're probably mad at ourselves for not doing it already. Or whatever it is. And it's not helpful. And it sounds like, yeah, it's menacing and critical. But you're so right. That is a good point. We're saying you should. You probably already thought about it. And we're not at, we don't, we don't. And I could see this being in a relationship where often men want to fix their partners when they hear things. They're like, well, let's problem solve. And that's a lot of what I could hear like, um, you should really go and tell your boss you need that raise or whatever. If someone comes home, you know, like I'm just the things that sometimes the fixer, I'm a fixer too, though. I do that to, to in relationships. Like I'll have friends who come over because this goes in all relationships, mm-hmm. to be honest. I'm telling you, I see this in personal life, professional life everywhere, but I find that I'm such a caretaker with my friends that I had one call me the other day with something. I'm like, and I went into problem solving mode. I'm like, oh, you need me to listen. Like, you don't, you're not asking for advice sometimes. So you have to know the difference. So just to give out you shoulds all willy nilly. If you are a fixer and you're trying to, to not be this you shoulder person, how's a way that you can like respond to someone that's coming to you? I think you could say, oh, I think it's really, if someone's coming to you, because right, sometimes we do want advice. You could say if you know that maybe they haven't thought about it. You'd be like, well, no, this is just as bad. Have you ever thought about? (laughs) Have you ever thought about making a list? That would still piss me off because I would know that they're saying it that way. I think how you would do it is if you're a fixer, keep asking questions. And here's the other thing. If the best way to solve it, if you're a fixer is to say, how do you need me to support you right now? Oh, I like that. I've got some ideas. Do you just want me to listen? I have some ideas. You probably thought of them. Let me know what you've tried. All- so what do you think would work? Oh, See, here's okay. the thing. When people are upset, complaining, going through something, if you ask them, we all have the answers, you guys. I got to trust. I got to be honest with you. We pretty much have a lot of the answers we need. And I think if you help your partner get to the, you know, ask them, well, well what do you think you would do? Or what? I, keep asking them, keep asking questions until they say, no, what do you think? If they say, what do you think? Mm. I don't think you should still say you should go to the gym or you should whatever, but you know, I think it's more like, well, I hear what you're saying and this is why I'm thinking this would be helpful for you. So, yeah. yeah. What the, you should, uh, cause I feel like we've had callers call in and about their partners kind of letting themselves go. Like if there's a habit that your partner's doing or a habit you'd like them to pick up instead of you should, like what are, what are some ways that you can kind of get them to, to do those things. <laughs> to do those things. I mean, I think it's much like, listen, people are only going to do things if they, no one's going to change unless they want to change. So if you ever are a fixer and you're in a relationship, you think, well, once we get married or once we move in together, or once we have sex, everything's going to be different. That is not true. People do not change 
their own behaviors unless they it comes to them on their own in a way that makes sense to them. So yes, they might have thought of going to the gym a million times. But if you say things like, you know, um, yeah, like, uh, I think, what have you tried? What do you, they could say they're complaining about their weight or something. Mm-hmm. What have you tried in the past? Or you give them things, what have you tried in the past that's worked for you? Or if people say they don't, you give them other options. I'm trying to think of what you're, before the gym, like you'd say like, uh, we're talking about the weight thing. This is a tough one. I think it's more like a we. We take a class together. We we are team. We're we're a team here. Um, don't send them annoying articles about people going to the gym. And my mom, like people do things like that. Like go to the gym and here's how it works. Or use the steps, you know, like eat better. Let's eat better is one. Okay, we should probably eat better. Let's cook. Let's, we can make some meals together. You know, offer things that have worked for you. True. You think that could be a little like, I always go to the gym. But I think that in all these conversation things, these things, I guess the point is they get you into attack mode. The other one is why did you? Oh. If you say why did you, it's kind of like a why question is criticism like in disguise. You're saying like, like they're never positive. Why did you, why did you forget my birthday? Why did you show up late? Why did you leave your socks on the floor? Like you're, you're not, if this is part of your regular mm-hmm. language, you probably are fighting with your partner and you're probably not making any leeway. You're probably not moving past whatever issues you have. And then when you ask why, they're going to give you an excuse and then you're going to get mad at the excuse most of the time. Right, because you already have your point. You already have the thing that you want to say and they're not going to be like, why'd you leave your, why'd you leave your, the dishes out again. Why'd you leave the dishes out? Oh, that's my, oh my God, it's my pet peeves, dishes. They're not going to go, what if they said, what could you say that would get you out of that? But first of all, you'd be annoyed and then you'd say, oh, I was really in a rush. Well, that's not going to go, oh, okay, no problem. Like even if I was like, I couldn't do this mm-hmm. just because I was in a rush or I fell asleep, I'm going to do them in the morning. Would that, de- if the person who said, why did you, you don't, what would you say, Jamie, your roommates? You'd be like. There's nothing they could say that would not make you, you're pissed. Why'd you, when you get to the point where you're saying, why'd you do this? I already know why. They're lazy. Yeah. Because you're lazy. (laughs) There's nothing they could say. Right. I get lazy too. We all get lazy. We all get lazy. I don't know. I mean, okay. Because my other thing that I've run into with certain things as far as like pet peeves for things like that, like a why people don't do stuff. It's because it's, it's something for me that triggers me. So me, I like to have the dishes put away and clean. But that's not how everyone feels. So then I get in these weird modes where I feel like I have now taken on the dishes. Oh, because like, resentfully so, though. Because you don't think it's going to happen. You yeah. take it on and you just do them for everybody? Yeah, I just do. Well, if they're there, I'll do them. I mean, they've been getting better. Don't get me wrong. They've actually been getting better over time. But in case they're so- listening, are you trying to backpedal with the roommates? Yeah, they're not listening. But okay. if they were, I mean, it's true, though. They are getting better. But like when people have these things of... Like ha- like I said, like habits you want them to get into. Like, how could you get your partner oh, right. to start getting taking the trash out more when you're always doing it? Well, like, here's the best get- way. Okay, so when they do take the trash out, you're like, oh, can I just tell you that felt so good that you just took it out? I love, like, you could be like, that it help, that is a, helps me so much. I love that you did that. Thank you. You appreciate them. You don't, because I think sometimes people do things and they, they just like, oh, finally... And they don't want to appreciate because they think that if you compliment someone, well, people who think compliments are weaknesses, that it's sort of like, they're like, I'm still going to make them fight. I'm still mad. Finally, they check it out. But to like kind of recognize how much it helped them and to say thank you and to have gratitude around something that efforts that people are making, <laughs> when you focus on the positive, not the negative, that's how you help. 888-947-8277. Okay, some other things. <laughs> calm down. Oh. Do you say calm down? Listen, if you get to the point of saying calm down, that is not going to de-escalate it, de- de-escalate the situation at all. It directly invalidates whatever you need to calm down about. They think you need to calm down about it. If you're at that point where someone is like, ah, oh, so no, calm down, that you're never going to go, okay, you're right. Phew. It's true, but how? what do you say to someone when they're like freaking out and you're like, I just do need you to relax for a second. Like how do you just let like not say anything or what I do you do? I think you could try to, that's a really good point, instead of calm, but you don't want to yell calm down. You just kind of like, you just kind of look at him. You're like, I hear you. Take some deep breaths. Deep breaths is a really good thing. You just are like, I hear you're saying, yeah, it looks really upsetting. I know, I know. But calm down is not going to do it. So it's more like tuning in on like, and maybe you just let him freak out for a second. 
I mean, obviously, if they're throwing shit across the room, you got to like hold them and be like, don't, you know. But if you're just yelling, like saying, calm down, um, automatically makes us feel bad because we think, oh, God, I'm making, I'm throwing a tantrum. And, and it's, it's, it's completely disregarding everything that we're trying to do. If I'm freaking out and I'm having a tantrum, I am not going to calm down. Like if I get to mm-hmm. that point, mm-hmm. it's not going to happen. So that that's, won't work. That's, it's invalidating it what's is. happening. Like if I could calm down, I would, but I'm actually freaking out because I'm trying to make a goddamn point. You calm, you shut up. I don't get mad. <laughs> I'm getting mad like someone just said, calm down to me. That's how mad it makes me. All these things. This is the one thing is I hate hearing it, but sometimes in the moment, it's just like a reflex to say it. No, I know. But if it's, it depends how you say it too, like calm down. Like, oh, maybe you could. I don't even think I'd like calm down. No, it's not. Breathe. It doesn't matter because I've tried to tell calm down. To other you did people. it to me. I, think I did it once it and me. I was like, just calm down. It's okay. And you were like, no, it's not okay. Did and I? I was like, okay, go do the video in the corner then. <laughs> did you say calm? Yeah. I freaked out and calm down. I don't remember this, but I'm And sure. I was like, it was just a reflex because I was like, oh, <sighs> breathe. That's funny. I did. I was like, don't tell me. And but I, it's okay. Like, obviously, you know. We no, got dude, we like, J- Tracy and I can fight. Tra- Did you just call me Tracy? Oh, because you know why? You just called me Tracy. Yeah, I just called you Tracy because in front of me it says Tracy Dunblazer is a name, and I was about to read this quote. <laughs> That's an awesome name, by the way. Jamie, I don't know who Tracy is. She's this woman. No, I'm tra- I, now. I am Tracy. It is now Jamie, Emily and Tracy. I can't believe that I. You t- yeah, you probably would tell me to come. Maybe down. we I should just it. break up. Maybe we should. <laughs> maybe we should just break up. Threatening to. Maybe we should just break up, Jamie. No. <laughs> Don't yes. break up with me. No, we never will break up. <laughs> Threatening divorce or a breakup is poison unless you mean it. But we had a funny discussion about this because, first of all, if you want to break, you should only say we should break up if you really want to break up. But we, I realize that we all have different attachment styles. And so when we were practicing here, like before, they're like, wow. So if someone said to me, maybe we should break up, I'd be like, yeah, you're probably right. Like in my older, in my less mature days, mm-hmm. I would think because I'm anxious attachment or avoidant, I'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. I don't want to get hurt or abandoned. I'd be like, yeah, you're right. Let's go. Like, I, I, you're right. We should break up, perhaps. And then Michelle said if her boyfriend used to say like, maybe we should just break up. Yeah, he would be, he would threaten me with that and throw that in my face all the time. And I would drop to the floor and be like, no, no, don't leave me. And I would do anything for him. In order for him to not break up with me, right. but it was so unhealthy. Very unhealthy. And then, Jane, if someone said to you, we should just break up. Uh, in the past, when that's happened, it's like, you know, we should just break up. And I'm just like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I mean, I'll be sad. And it depends on the situation. Like, I would be sad and crying and be like, that makes no sense. It's not happening. We're not breaking up. I would just say no. I right. would reject it. You'd reject it flat out. I reject the breakup. Three women, three very different responses. To breaking up. I'm just thinking that we're all so different in this world, but I think that never works. And then sorry, but you guys, remember anything after but is bullshit. If you say but, if you're like, oh my God, this was so fun, but I wish that you would have been on time or but, or like saying like, sorry, but it's just damaging because it's essentially saying like, yeah, like I hurt you, I hurt you, I hurt you, but I was totally justified. In everything I'm doing. So everything like, I hurt you, but you deserve it. That's all we're hearing. So don't even say I'm sorry. Don't waste your I sorry zone with the butts canceling it out. Yeah. If you're not actually sorry, what's something you can just, can you just be like, I hear you, but I don't know how to say it without but. I know. See, just say I'm sorry when you mean it. Don't just throw sorry out there. But I think it's a very mixed message. Be like, sorry, but, sorry, but, sorry, anything. It's like, um, well, cause it's obviously like, you're, you're not actually your partner, sorry. You're not really sorry. But if you're really sorry, sorry is a beautiful thing to say. And then just stop talking. I'm really sorry. I hurt your feelings. I can tell that I did. And I never want to make you feel bad. End of story. Do you think it's worth it that if you really, even if you really don't think you did something wrong to sometimes just to give in and just do it for the better? Well, well, how do you say did something wrong? Like, like or just kind of, because sometimes it's like it, that notion of not always needing to be right. Well, that is important. I think you choose your battles in a relationship and... If you did something that upset your your partner's feelings, even if it wasn't intentional, but their feelings were hurt, say mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Like I'm, I didn't want to hurt your feelings, even if it makes no sense to you sometimes. But they are hurt. Why is it so hard to say I'm sorry? Like you didn't mean it, it was intentional, but you did. You hurt up their feelings. 
just say it or don't say it if you don't mean it. It's true. Yeah, these it was so funny earlier because we were reading these and we were just like this, like everything we were like we all thought of things like was just so triggered. I know. Sorry, but whatever. Oh, don't like, ever text me whatever. Of- don't ever text me. Oh, oh, okie dokie. Okie dokie. I did that once. Okay, let me story time. Uh, I because I didn't know because to me because me and my mom say okie dokie to each other because we're always like okie dokie artichokey. That was just like how we were. Like, right, when but I was artichokey, up. I wouldn't care. Well, yeah, but I don't know. I'm not gonna throw in the artichokes all the time with my boss. So, <laughs> but I texted her okie dokie and she called me. She's like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> Like literally, you called me and you're like, "Are you okay?" Because you texted me okie dokie and like that means that you're not okay. I'm like, no, no, I, no, I'm fine. I thought, I thought that that was okay. I just like feel like you're always getting like I needed to jazz up my text replies to you because I didn't want to always be like, "Sounds good, okay." <laughs> like I thought that I needed to be more creative. Like in my mind, my stupid mind, I had to be more creative. I- so I came up with okie dokie and you thought it was like the worst well, it's a trigger. It's just like, cause I hear like okie dokie or like, okay. Like, it's like it's to me, okie dokie reads as I'm super annoyed with you, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okie dokie. If you say so boss, okie dokie. And I got to tell you that a lot of times it, people, I believe that okie dokie is a little negative. People say it. not you and your mom and the artichoke, but it's, <laughs> But like okie dokie and we know who someone else here did it. I have a it. question. How did you spell it? Is Was it the spelling that triggered nope, you? Nope, just the okie do- okay, I-E. How else do you spell oh, it? Okie okay, 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 E-Y. Okie dokie. Either way. I don't oh, know. Sometimes just, I think that I-E is cuter. Michelle's like, oh, I'm her sister. I'm like, I, I, think, I, think, I think I've said that no, to you, you before. But Michelle, okay, here's the thing about Michelle. Michelle's the only person that I would <laughs> certainly know that if she's an okie dokie, she met up with love, flowers, rainbows, yes. and unicorn- unicorns. Well, yes. We, sorry. Why? Come on. I, mean, I don't know, I know. it's Michelle, I like you, I think, but... but now she knows never to do I'm never going to do it, I'm never. I, that's just random, but we never know it's going to trigger, I forgot that I called you and said that, Well, now you know. And I don't think, I've never said it since, <laughs> I think I may have said it once, but then I like corrected it, I'm like, that's not what I meant, like, uh, yes. <laughs> Whatever. Yes. Okay. But I know, it's, you gotta learn it. people, Whatever. I See? got it. You do gotta learn people. Alright guys, we're gonna take a quick break, and we come back on to your calls. Okay, let's talk to Sarah. She's 32 in Louisiana, and she is in a female-female relationship, and they got approached uh, to swing. Her partner's interested, but she's not really Ooh. feeling it. Okay, hey, Sarah. Tell me what's going on. Hello. Hi. Oh, I'm actually, um, as we were waiting, as I was waiting, I found out that my girlfriend has been sending selfies to people, so I'm a little caught off guard here. Oh, wow. However, I'm calling because, yes, my girlfriend and I have been in a relationship for about 13 years, okay. and we, uh, anytime we do introduce ourselves to other people, generally heterosexual couples, they feel free to ask us if we would be interested in swinging. However, we've noticed that they don't ever ask any other heterosexual that. So, right. Huh. Um, I thought it was our. I, I thought it was just a problem of how we should address other people about it. However, just now that I've stumbled across these selfies that she's been actually engaging, I guess I have a different problem now. Uh, what do you mean she's been because engaging in exchanging selfies or nude? Like like. Uh... Yeah, I just saw. I just saw where she has um, actually been a part of some type of, of group I, and so she, they've been exchanging pictures so oh um, well did not, she tell you yeah. about it or you just found it on her phone or something no. Found, okay no i was holding and she was actually coming through the house she, she's not in here right now so it's, we've got a different problem <laughs> oh. i was thinking we needed to address the problem of how people feel free to come up and ask us if we okay. would like to swing. Right. Um, however, I'm kind of thinking maybe she is interested in the swinging part, um, if especially since she's joined this group. Well, okay. So, so, so that's not something you're not interested in swinging. Now, here's the thing, because you're not, are you with men too? Sometimes are you bisexual? I No, no. I Well, I was with men at one time. Okay. And during the time that I was with men, I never had anybody ever, any other couples well, ever right. ask two me women. and my... Right. Yeah, but as soon as there's two women involved, um, however, my girlfriend is generally what is what everybody calls the butch one. So I'm okay. surprised she's actually engaging with conversation with other gentlemen. Well, 
Uh, I don't know what that's about. Well, so. we got to, do you want to get her on the phone? I mean, as long as we're here, if she went in the other room. I mean, that's, you just I found out. I think we're going to have to. Okay, fine. This, don't do it live. But, but that's, well, it sounds like you guys have some things. You've been together 13 years. It sounds like maybe she's craving some change right now with your sex life. Like, let's be honest. It happens in every relationship. So I think maybe mm-hmm. she's acting out in some way and that really the, you guys could need to focus on what you guys can do together to enhance your sex life right now. Trying new things, you know. Well, you- we we're we're you know we 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 like you know doing things in public and going to um, you know bookstores and things like that and getting toys. There's no shame in that, right? We were very open about it. However, um, the, the swinging thing was a little bit different because um, she tends to be jealous. So we well, gotta go talk to her. this. I listen, wouldn't. you gotta hang up with me and just say, let's talk about this. What, what how, like, have her walk yeah. through this scenario because maybe she wants to watch you with another woman and she found some guy's wife who wants to be with you and she thinks that'll be hot. Like, you don't can't assume anything right now. I think you know her pretty well, and if yeah. this doesn't seem like her normal behavior, it sounds like you gotta hang up with me because you just got this and have a really honest with try to take a few deep breaths because it sounds like you might be angry right now, but it might not be what you think and find out what it is that she seeking well, why she would like it like ask her and listen without judgment like yeah, tell me more tell me more tell- told me, yeah, yeah she's always told me that she she hated penis so i well this is now. this is what i'm i'd be so, surprised if she woke up and like penis one day too so that's why you got to go find out and i can't wait to hear what okay, happens well, but try to do it without like already like assuming and jumping on her but to listen calm yeah because that's I'm, how you're going to get gonna it through to, i mean i don't know what to tell yeah, you until we I, find out more information but yeah no, I know. So, <laughs> uh, but I, yeah, I, I've never called before, so this was interesting. But thank you. I well, there's a sign. It. There's a uh, reason we'll why. To... Call back after. Yeah. We'll be here. We're here tomorrow. I, Sarah, I'm invested now. Bring me into it. Let me help you guys if there's a problem. Thanks for calling, Sarah. Yeah, no. Okay, let's talk to Dave in Tennessee. He says he has a small penis and wants advice on extenders he could use. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Hey, Emily. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. I uh, love the show. Thanks. Um, so this is the deal. I-, I was born with a birth defect, and um, w- after multiple surgeries to correct, uh, I was left with a, when fully erect, a three-inch penis. Okay. Uh, now, um, <clears throat> fortunately, uh, I- I'm married, and or have been married for 20 years with two kids, uh, and we have a very good sex life. Um, but uh, one, you know, as growing up, and, and as you would expect, uh, I personally have always longed to have something larger than what I have. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> my, my wife, uh, who had been with men before we got married, she has consistently said that uh, she actually prefers me over the larger men that she had been with in the past. Great. Um, and we have a very good, uh, a very good sex life. Um, I always have the, I guess, the fantasy or the urge to actually uh, want to see her with a larger penis uh, during lovemaking. So she does let me use a, a dildo on her. Okay. A, a, like a, a six inch dildo, which which is a really a big turn on for me. Um, but I've always wanted to do it myself, and yeah. I've tried probably a half a dozen uh, silicone type uh, extenders. But <clears throat> and uh, she she basically in each of them they just they don't do anything for her. they don't have uh they're either they're too flimsy or too squishy or something to that okay. effect okay. so i've always wondered if there's if there's something that you know of that 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 i could put on that has a little bit more stability or you know reacts better to uh that would be uh more of a uh a, a natural feel, I guess, for her. Right. Well, you know, yeah. Okay, so the thing is, there are, I don't know which ones you've tried. Have you tried the OptiMail PPA extender? Uh, have not. It's It says it's gotten really not. good Opti-Mail. reviews. It's soft, stretchy, extended uh, d- extender designed to add girth and length when worn over a penis, enhanced with a textured interior, provides additional stimulation to the wearer. So it's textured on the inside, which feels good for you. 
So mm-hmm. it's gotten good reviews. It's by Doc Johnson. We love we love them. They make great products. Um, yeah, you, well, we could put that in the show notes for you. But honestly, I it's funny. I don't know of any other ones that I haven't heard a lot about them. To be honest, a lot of people have used them with you know uh, great success. But I'm wondering if you could also. Yeah, I guess you want to be wearing. I'm trying to think if you could. Do you ever use a strap on? Have you ever used a strap on with a dildo? Uh, I I have not. Um, I've wondered. I've also wondered if there was one of those that you could insert in just to have have it in the right position. Of course. Well, yeah, you know, that's, uh, I bet you you could fit this in. Oh, this is such a good idea. I think perhaps you could get a harness, strap on harness that you know goes around your waist, and then maybe put the extender. Like put your penis in that in the extender, right? And then it'll probably keep it in place, and you'll be able to be more directed okay. with it. That's a good idea. Yeah, go to my or go to my site sexelmy.com, Click on the store, and then you'll see the Opti Mail. We can also put it in the show notes, and then check out the harnesses. I think that's your next plan. Excellent. I, okay. I'll, I'll do that. Let me and know how it goes. Yeah. Just to give uh, and just to give a a, a little uh, shout out uh, from what my wife says is is uh. Um, it's not what you got, but how you use it. So. Exactly. exactly. Well, I'm so glad to hear. Yeah, <laughs> let me just say that. I didn't even comment on that. You think I love that you guys are having amazing sex. Like they say, it's not the size of the ship. It's the motion of the ocean. And it is true how you use it. It sounds like, like I opened up the show. I'm not sure if you heard it. I was like, yeah, you guys, we're not craving penises all the time, you know? That's about a lot of other things. Mm, that's true. Penises are important. And we do a lot of other things to, to keep it uh, Well, keep it sounds it like you do, and I love that. So let me know how this works. I'm glad you called with this. All right. Thank and, you. Okay, thank you so much thank for you, calling. Emily. I appreciate it. All right, we could take a call. We could help the people. Let's help the people. All right. Let's talk to Chad. He's 39 in New York, and he wants to know how to tell someone that they smell down there. All right. Hey, Chad. Tricky one, huh? Tell me what's Ooh. going on. Guys, hello, Emily. I really love your show. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Of course. Gosh, so I was strictly dickly for a long time, and then I dated a trans man recently, and the taste of him, of course, was different than a man, but it was a little funky down there. Okay. One, um, it, it was a committed relationship, unfortunately, uh we have broken up since then, but I, I do um, wish to uh, um, be in relationships with other men and trans men in the future. And uh, I, I had the scenario where I think there was some fecal matter possibly mm. mixed in. I mean, it was more than just musk. Okay. It, 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 it was wet and... Yeah, uh, I mean, you got to just, I mean, maybe it's just like you take a shower beforehand. You're like, let's, let's take a shower. Let's clean up. Let's, you know, let's take a shower together. That'd be really hot. You know, I think that that's what you do if it wasn't as clean with this particular person. But also there are like natural, the thing is, okay, so you haven't been with that many vulva having people it sounds like vagina having members of society. So they are a little bit different. Like they're, they're not, you know, I think of uh, whatever people think the people there's a there's a certain notion to um i think vaginas get a bad rap that they have really bad odors and the truth is the vagina is self-cleaning you don't need a douche it's it's pretty fu- if you clean yourself up and i you know most i know that before i have sex with someone i'm always i always wipe down and make sure that i'm you know clean and hygienic and all that stuff some people don't so it might be a case of letting them know that like hey let's take a shower or just, could we clean up but the other thing is because I thought when I just saw your call, I didn't know, but there are some women who could get some, something like called like bacterial vaginosis, which has a odor, and they might not know it because we're not always smelling ourselves. And so there's times where most vaginal only you either I can't tell Chad either you just got to get used to it. I mean, to what it is if you're just going to delve into this whole world, or sometimes there are like extreme odors where you just have to say, you know what, I'm into you, but I got to tell you, there's something down there that doesn't quite seem right, and I want to make sure you don't have an infection. Okay, no, no. I, I feel that this individual was fairly normal, and uh, the, the rest of the sex was fine. And it, it was, it was um, really that one time, and he did ask me how he tasted down there, and I lied to him. Mm, okay. 
Um, I know. So, so I, I, I mean, should, I don't know. I, Here's I, what I you mean, should do. I got an idea. Keep baby. I keep baby wipes by my bed. And if I'm with someone, I just like wipe them down. I wipe myself down. You could have some warm towels and just do it as like a, you know, like they bring you in the in the restaurant, like hand wipes. Why shouldn't we all wipe off during sex? We should all wipe out before sex. We should wash our hands. We forget to do that, but we are carrying bacteria. Like if we get bacteria in our body parts in different orifices, that's how we get infections. So if you just say I'm really into cleanliness, like, and you have some nice towels and you wipe them down, problem solved. You are amazing. <laughs> Chad, you're amazing. There you go. Go out and get them. Get some baby wipes and have a good time. Thanks for calling. <laughs> and they also have wipes, Dio Doc, and there's some like really beautiful body wipes that you can keep by the bed. And Mega Babe. Mm-hmm. Mega Babe wipes are cool. Like you can buy some probably on our site as well, mm-hmm. in our store. Get some sex wipes. I always have sex wipes by my bed masturbation for myself you just you always need wipe when you're eating in bed i often do that i get really hungry sometimes i go to bed and then i'm hungry and then i'm constantly <laughs> i i got this thing for my bed where it's like uh the table it's like a mini table almost and so it comes out so i can kind of like you know how like if someone loved me enough to bring me breakfast in bed it'd be like that but with a little table oh yeah so i eat um, by myself in my bed like that that's so cute under your six comforters <laughs> yeah except on top of them on top of the six comforters <laughs> that's what i meant sorry she only goes under two of them we still don't understand it it's my weird thing let me have my weird you thing. can have so many weird things that's what makes the world go round we all have weird things which makes us not weird. The exactly. only weird thing, here's the weirdest thing. If you called me and you said, I have nothing weird. And be like, huh? I'll believe you. I'll That's believe just, you. yeah, we all got our things. Embrace them. Love them. Love all your parts. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. Let me know. Did you? I love to hear from you. I love when you review the show. That's awesome. Or if you just subscribe wherever you listen to the podcast, that makes everyone's lives so much easier. But really, I just want to say thank you. And I'm grateful for all of you for listening to this podcast and supporting it and sharing your thoughts and telling your friends about it. It just means a lot. And um, we love hearing from you. So thanks to you guys and thanks to Ken, my great team, Ken, Michelle, producer, Jamie, and Michael. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com.